Ah, so today I think I'm gonna try to check my auto transmission fluid. Let's see what happens here. So I come in here. Where's the transmission dipstick? Let's see, that's regular oil right there. Where is tra the transmission is down in there? So let's see, where's the dipstick? There's no dipstick. Oh man. This right here is where the dipstick goes. Now I kind of already knew that it was like this. <laughs> they don't want you to change the transmission fluid in these anymore. And they don't even want you to check it. Once you open that thing up, it can get contaminated. And that's what leads them to problems. People putting too much fluid in or not enough fluid. As long as you don't mess with it, it should be good to go. I did manage to check that fluid and the fluid's a little bit browner than I'd like. So I'm going to put brand new fluid in and I'm going to change that filter. All right, so th this is the 62 TE transmission uh, found in an 08 Grand Caravan. Now this is behind a 3.8 motor. This was the first year that they started using this transmission. It's, it's the six speed. The same transmission was used in the uh the later models so anything 08 and up not sure about which engines it was behind i'm pretty sure it was behind the three sixes and i'm and possibly the four o's so basically what i'm doing here is i've got to knock all these bolts loose but there's a way to do this you want to break them all loose just barely and take the back ones off all the way that way you when you're draining your pan you can actually drain right into right in your pan and and you can keep it um, somewhat clean you're not gonna stay clean trust me this is a, a dirty job all right so I've got them all loose and you can see them already dripping so let's Let's remove some of these. All right, so at this point, what I've done is I've removed the bolts that were on the back half off the back side, and I've loosened all these other ones. Well, the thing is, it's just at the spot where it's starting to leak, and you want to let it drain. But what you can do to help it is just Give it a couple blows with the dead blow. And see how I got it to go a little bit more? I'm just barely breaking that loose. Now I've got to let this drain out because it's really going to cause a, a mess. So for, for right here, I've got it leaking. I've got it draining out. I got the pan situated. I'm really just going to let it go for a little while. And right now I'm down to four bolts holding it. I'm going to go down to three. Is the drip slowing down? So did you, did you see how that worked? I kept this one, this one, and one over, over here in. Get this one out. Drain a little bit more out. Eventually you're gonna have to just bite the bullet and and pull the screws out and hold it up and dump it yourself okay here it goes all right if you look at this pan 
you got a little magnet that sits down here. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but you can see that there's a little bit of a little bit of gunk on it. See, just a little bit of gunk, and that's the stuff that's inside that transmission that you want to get out of there. So make sure you get it nice and scraped. So when you get it down like that, you know you got pretty much all of it off there. The best thing you can do is you just take a little bit of a scotch bright pad, right? And look what happens. You can get all of it off and you're not really causing, causing scrapes in there. I took the scotch bright and I really got these edges really well, right? That's where the gasket surface is going to seat. But what I also did, if you look, I kind of feathered down in here because I wanted to make sure I got all the old gasket material off there. I don't want any of that breaking up and maybe getting caught up in something. So now, since this is ready, this is ready to rumble. I'll clean this magnet off one more time. Get a good, make sure that's good and wiped out. That magnet goes right down in there. That's where it can't move. That's where it came from. So that's all That's all done. All right, so this, it, this thing's held on by a couple of T25 Torxes. Now they're not tamper resistant, so that's a good thing. Let's see, you got one of them that's right here. And one of them that's right here. And that one's out. And it's got a little washer on it. Make sure that washer comes off too. I don't know if it can fall off there or not. Alright, now this should just pull right out now. All right, so that's the filter. So now let's look at this. Right here, there's actually an, a gasket, an O-ring gasket that you, you can take out. I do have a new one, although I don't know if I'm gonna use it. This doesn't look too bad. This is where the dipstick tube, the dipstick would go in. When the dipstick comes down in here, it won't go any further than this this bracket. Now, I do want to use a little bit of this and, and clean this up a little bit. If you look, this gasket surface has just got a little bit on it. I don't want to clean that off. I got all this cleaned up best it's going to get. Well, I'm going to take this, get it on there nice and straight, push it right back up right up in there. And then, just to get them started. Now my hands are so oily, I can't even twist these. <laughs> I don't have the torque specs on this, but I know it was just a little bit tight. So that's what I'm gonna do. I got them all started. And you snug them all up. Just barely snug, not even. That way I'm getting this nice and even up there. All right, so these things should be torqued on to 105 inch pounds. And that's where I'm set at, 105 inch pounds. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Okay, so let's get one over here. All right. So you can tell by the picture that all the fluid that I collected, I collected about 
Hey, going on six quarts, probably five and a half quarts. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, I remove this plug, I threw my funnel down in there, and I'm gonna start off with maybe like, maybe, maybe four quarts, maybe four and a half quarts, um, and see where I go, see where it stands. So let's, let's do that. I'm gonna tell you something else here. You wanna really make sure that your filter, your funnels, your everything you have is clean because you don't wanna be knocking dirt down into that thing. So let's start. So I got five quarts here. And this is ATF plus four. Chrysler's or ATF plus four. You wanna make sure you get what you need. Make sure that you uh, use the correct fluid. So I don't know if anybody ever showed you this. But you notice I'm using, when I'm filling this, I'm kind of filling it what looks like, what looks to be backwards, right? But the reality is, you want the air to get in. So when you're filling it, you want to fill like that. You always see on a, everyone tries to fill it that way. And it, that's not the right way. You want you want the air to get in there. Watch what happens. If I try filling it like this, it's gonna glug, right? So you fill it that way. And then you'll get a nice smooth stream the whole time. If you knew how many years it took me to learn that lesson, man. <laughs> All right, so I went about went about four and a half, and what I'm going to do now is check the automatic transmission fluid. So if I check it right now, none of the fluid has gone through all the passages it needs to go through. So you really need to check this while it's running and after it has gone through all the different passages. So you really want to run it, get it up to temperature and check it from there after you've driven it around a little while. Make sure it got in at all the different gears. That way it can, all the fluid kind of works its way through all those different passages in the valve body. Our transmission is, is the 62 TE, right? So, if you look at the way this is, it goes the temperature Fahrenheit and the fluid level in millimeters. So right now, all that fluid is cold. It's not even warm at all. It would be basically off this chart. So what I want to do is basically warm this thing up. I want to check what temperature it is right now. And then I'll warm it up. And I want to make sure as it's warm that I'm falling somewhere in between. Right? I don't want to be near the max. I don't want to be near the, near the minimum. I want to fall right in the middle. If you have an OBD2 code reader and your, and your transmission can tell a temperature, um, there are programs out there that will tell you that temperature. You can read that dynamic um, you know, attribute. Mine doesn't, unfortunately, so I don't have that option. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my, my infrared thermometer, get myself where I want to be, where I want to be close, and then I'm going to go from there and get myself in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, so I'm not quite to 20, but I'm in this range right about here. So I'm in about the 18. And I'm, in, I'm at about 100 degrees. Approaching 100 degrees. 100 degrees, 18, 
really that I, I'm still good with even if that was 20 even if that was 20 I'd just be a little bit on the high side so that's my 100 range it's even at 20 so uh, I'm I'm probably I'm probably about perfect so let me take this baby for a ride get it all get it into all the different gears and then I'll come back and we'll try this again okay so I drove it around a little while let's check the temperature down there on the pan All right, so I'm in the 115 to 120 range. I'll take that cap off. Damn, that's hot, hot, hot down there. Pull out the paper. In the 115 to 120 range. I want anywhere from... From about... 12 to... Uh, call it 29 millimeters. So now let's take a look at what we got. Just shove this down in there until it, until it don't go no more. And pull it out. And well, there's a bad one. Let's do it again. Looking low. I think I'm on the very, very low side. So I really got to get it up to a higher temperature. It's hard to read this baby. I think I'm right at right at about the ten, maybe twelve. What? 